We'll get started today with uh, the next chapter. We're on chapter 11. It's about stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is looking at chemical reactions and knowing how much reactants you need to make a certain amount of products. So it's, it's predicting how much you're going to get in a reaction and how much you need for a certain amount of product. So it's a study of relationships between amounts of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. It's making a predictions about how much you're going to get in a reaction, how many grams you need to start with of each reactant to get a certain amount of product. So this is found by looking at the reactions and the ratios between the reactants and products. For example, if you looked at this reaction right here, you had propane C3H8 reacting with oxygen. To produce carbon dioxide and water. So this tells you a few things about the reaction. Um, one thing it says is that for every one atom or molecule of C3H8, you need five O2s in the reaction. So you can think of it this way. You, know, you have one C3H8 molecule in here. You need to have five O2s. So 502 molecules have to react with one C3H8 to produce three CO2s. And four H2Os. So you can think of it that way in the terms of atoms and molecules. And that this reaction, you can think of the coefficients in front telling you how many molecules or atoms you need to react. In, in this case, we need one propane molecule to react with every five O2 molecules to produce three CO2s and four H2Os. We could think of it this way too. You know, we could multiply everything in here by, you know, say two. And if we multiplied everything in this reaction by two, what would that say? Well, now we'd have two C3H8s reacting with 10 O2s to produce six CO2s and eight H2Os. So we could double, triple, quadruple these. As long as you multiply it to everything in here, you can do that. Well, we could do the same thing with a dozen. We can multiply everything here by 12. And we could say, well, 12 propanes would react with 60 O2s to produce 36 CO2s and 48 H2Os. But to make it easier, we could say one dozen C3H8s react with five dozen O2s to produce three dozen CO2s and four dozen H2Os. And so we can multiply it in this case by a dozen it's the same ratio. We could also use moles. 
and we can say one mole of propane reacts with five moles of O2 to make three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. And that's the most useful way to interpret this. You know, so we can look at it in terms of atoms and molecules, which we just did. But the best or most useful way to look at it would be in terms of moles. And we could say that we have one mole of propane reacting with five moles of O2 to produce three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. Uh, question, Robert? Uh, yeah, so would you have to reduce it like if you had um, like 2 C3H8 plus 10 O2, like if everything was multiplied by 2? Yeah, I mean, definitely in the finished product, you would want to reduce the reaction. That's true. So definitely chemists would prefer to have it reduced. Uh, they wouldn't be wrong to have it as 2, 10, 6, and 8. But definitely, it's easier to look at it in just in terms of the reduced number. So yeah, if you can reduce it, you should. But I just wanted to let you know that you know if you need to multiply it by two, three, five, a dozen, you can. It's the same ratio every time. Okay, thank you. Now, some students wonder, you know, on here, if you're to count the number of moles on this side, you have six moles on this side and you have seven moles on that side. So that doesn't seem to make any sense. But remember what moles represent. Moles represent a number. It, it doesn't represent a mass. It just tells you how many of each you have. And you can see on here that those numbers aren't the same. We have one C3H8 reacting with five O2s to produce three CO2s and four H2Os. Now, the amount of atoms, though, is equal on both sides. If you were to count up how many O's you have, let's go do that really fast. So we have 10 O's on this side. On that side, we have four right there. We have six, so we have 10 O's on this side. We have three C's, three C's. We have eight H's. We have eight H's. Uh, and that's everything. Uh, so the number of atoms is the same on both sides. Now they're grouped differently. On this side, the O's are grouped together. On this side, the O's, some are joined to carbon, some are joined to hydrogen. But the amounts of atoms are the same on both sides. That's the important thing. They've changed their arrangements. They made different arrangements with each other, but the amount of atoms is the same on both sides. So the number of moles can change because that's just how they're grouped. But the amount of atoms, though, does not change from reactants to products. So the amount of atoms and the kind of atoms does stay the same on both sides, as well as their masses. And so we would want to uh, look at how the mass is conserved on both sides. They're going to ask you today for homework to show that the mass is the same on both sides of the reaction. So let's do that right now. What we would need to do is look at the reactant side and add up the masses and compare it to the product side and see if the masses are the same for both. And so we could think of it atom by atom and just say, well, we have three C's on that side. Look up the mass of carbon on your periodic table and you see at the bottom, you know, you look up on the periodic table, you know, carbon has a six up here. At the bottom, there's a 12.01. So that would give you the mass of carbon. So we would put in 12.01. And that can tell you two things. 12.01 can tell you the mass of one carbon atom in AMUs, or it can tell you the grams you need for one mole of carbon. So we can think of it in either way. Um, to make it easier, we'll go ahead and look at it this way. Let me erase this really fast and rewrite this. We can say that we have three moles of carbon. And we'll just think of it that way. You know, so again, this number right here could represent moles or number of atoms. And we'll just use it to represent moles. 
So we'll just say we have, we have three moles of carbon. We know in one mole of carbon, you have 12.01 grams. So we'd multiply that by three to get the amount of grams of three moles of carbon. Same thing for hydrogen. We have eight moles of hydrogen on here. Looking at the periodic table, we'd see that it's 1.01 .01 grams in one mole of hydrogen. So eight times that. And the last one is O2. So we see in the periodic table that oxygen is 16.0, and we have two of them. So 16.0 times two gives you 32. So there's 32 grams in one mole of O2. Sorry, I did that one wrong at the very bottom. So we do five times 32, and that will give you the mass of O, and that's 160. So this would be all our reactants. We'd add these up to get the total mass of the reactants. And that will equal 204.1 grams. Okay, it's 204.1 grams on the reactant side. And then we would confirm that the products also equal 204 grams. Does everybody have this down? Okay, so there's a question about why would the last one not be 10 moles of oxygen? Um, it actually would be that you could you could think of it that way too. Um, so you could also, what I said is that we had five moles of O2, which, you know, that would be true as well. So we have five O2s, but we also would have 10 O's. So we could think of it either way. Either way, you get the same answer. You could say, I have five times two, I have 10 O's, or I have five O2s. And either way, it would be the same way. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let's look now at the reactants or the product side. We looked at the reactants and we said that on the reactant side, we have 204.1 grams. We need to confirm that the products also has the same amount of mass. So do the same thing on this side. Uh, we have three moles of carbon. So you multiply it again by 12.01 grams. 36.03 grams of carbon. Um, we have three times two, we have six moles of O right here. So now we use 16.0 because it's just O. Now we could also have said, like um, the other question we had earlier, we could also say we have three moles of O2. So if we wanted to, we could say that too. We could say that we have three moles of O2, in which case down here would be 32.0. So either way, I mean, it, it just depends on whatever makes sense to you, but you get the same answer in either way. But in this case, we'll just say we have three times two or six moles of O and use 16.0 grams in one mole of O. Oh, I did that reverse, sorry. That should be 16 on top. The grams don't cancel out that way. 
Okay, so we should have 16 times 16.0 grams in one mole. So we do six times 16. What does that equal? I didn't make, I didn't write that one up. Let me see. Six times 16 gives you 96. And then we um, look on the other one, water. Four times two, that's eight moles of O. Oh, sorry, eight moles of H. And so we, um, it's 1.01 grams in one mole. Can you all see that in the very bottom? Is that cut off? So that gives you 8.08 .08 grams of H. And the last thing would be, oh, we have four O's. So we do four moles of O. times 16.0. Is this whole screen visible to you all? So make sure you can see all of this. So we do four times 16, and that gives you 64. So that's now all the products. We would add that all up. We do 36.03 plus 96 plus 8.0 plus 64. And that should also give us 204.1. So we confirmed that on both sides, before and after the reaction, it's the same amount of grams on both sides. So the number of moles does vary. We have one mole of C3H8, five moles of O2, for a total of six moles on that side. And the other side, we have three moles of CO2 plus four moles of H2O to give you seven moles. But the mass stays the same on both sides, and the amount of atoms stays the same on both sides. And that's the important thing. So the way they're grouped can change, so the moles can change but their masses and kinds of atoms will not change from reactants to products. Any questions about that before we go on? Okay, um, if there's no questions, um, go ahead in your book on page 371 and uh, do one and two. So today, just do one and two, and that's all we're going to be doing today. It, just on page 371, questions one and two for today.